I knew it was Mark that was hurt. I immediately called 911 and took off running. I had to find him. After I'd had a couple of drinks, I decided to get on a snow machine. And I'm going really fast, way too fast, making some bad choices, and uh, I end up uh, crashing the machine and uh, probably doing 70 or 80 miles an hour. He was laying there in the snow. I just screamed out, my Marky, my Marky, he's dead. I just know he's dead. But he just kept repeating over and over, I can't move my legs, Bree, I can't move. Well over an hour later, ambulance gets to me, gives me a ride to the hospital. Uh, by the time I get into the ER, I get the news that, uh, that I'm a quadriplegic. The first thing I thought of was, I'm never going to hold my babies again. And I said it, and I started crying. And uh, I felt like I had robbed my wife and my children from their father. And my surgeon's screaming in my face to wake up, and I'm coming out of, coming out of it. And, uh, and he says I'm wiggling my, my, my legs, and I can move my... I could move my left big toe, I could just go eh, just like that. Cade asks if he can sing a song to daddy. Jesus loves me. He sings, Jesus loves me, this I know. And he gets to the part, we are weak, he is strong. And all of a sudden Mark's right foot, which has not moved yet, flutters. No matter where, what kind of recovery I make, if I'm like this forever, if if I end up walking again, that's going to be your miracle. And it's not because of my hard work. And in that moment of surrender, I felt the Holy Spirit like I'd, I never have before. I feel so desperate for God. Maybe that's just the posture of surrender. There is some perseverance there. Um, daily perseverance, you know, weekly, second, second by second sometimes. Sometimes almost every other minute I'd have to just surrender those feelings and losing my career, uh, losing all those things, uh, having to surrender that constantly. Watching my husband unable to move, slumped over in the bed, it rips my heart out. What about my children? My sweet little children. My job is just to take care of them as best I can and let the doctors take care of Mark. As we transition to the Craig Hospital, Transitioning to Craig Hospital, it uh, it became a whole new new thing. That's when therapy started. My recovery went at such a pace that it would continually disrupt their plans. <laughs> I, I can't knowing, realizing, coming to full realization that I can't do this. It's not me. That's that's giving me the strength here to do this. I walked into Mark's hospital room today. The Holy Spirit has really been stirring. I walked in. Mark was sobbing. I ru rushed to his side. What's happening? What's happening? What's wrong? Are you okay? Are you in pain? What's happening? You know, I just couldn't even eat my breakfast because I felt like the Holy Spirit was just upon me so strong. And, uh, and it was in the mo those moments of surrender where I could feel that. Things have seemed really heavy. Caring for my children, caring for Mark. I need him. He needs me. The only place I can find solace is on the cold bathroom floor of our studio apartment at the hospital. I need God more than ever now. Even in your own surrender, feeling the Holy Spirit, knowing that God is there with you, knowing that Christ suffered just like you're suffering, you know, and if, if you kind of just embrace your suffering and say, I'm going to get through this, I'm going to own this, and I know you're here with me, God. Jesus did that too. He felt that. As things came back slowly in my body, it was like molasses. Trying to think of something and telling your body to move, it'd be like molasses flowing through your nerves and then finally your body would move sometimes. So that was the frustrating part of it. And knowing that like, wow, this is, shouldn't be happening, but here we are and it's doing it. It's slowly, my body's slowly coming back. And this is okay, God, I'm okay with this. You know, I'm, I'm alive. Life is a gift. As those, as your body, my body came back, you know, it was a sanctification process. It's so strange, but I feel as paralyzed as Mark is. I feel as though I'm in the same place. Parts of me are asleep, parts of me are awake. I feel so weak at times, most of the time, but it's Christ's power in me when I surrender to him that I find strength. 
we've made it home, in a private plane, no less. Someone from our congregation at home has flown down, volunteered their plane, volunteered their time to pilot us home in a private jet. It's amazing too, when we arrived home from the hospital, our church and our friends had done enough fundraising that a full year's salary was in our bank account. How is this possible? How is this possible that such a tragic moment has turned into this glory, God's glory? What's happening? I called the bank today. They're going to release us of our mortgage so that we can move. Move like we always have wanted to, to Sisters, Oregon, where my parents live. Almost five years ago, I was making some poor choices and I crashed a snow machine and I broke vertebrae in my neck. I was paralyzed shoulders down. Diagnosis was horrific. I'd never walk again. Nine weeks later, I walked out of the hospital carrying the crutches over my head. In those nine weeks, in those time, in that time, I surrendered myself to God. I surrendered my pain, my suffering to God, and my body came back. Uh, every doctor, every therapist I talked to said it was a miracle. Um, I'm still, four and a half years later, grabbing on that miracle and understanding it and processing through it and being sanctified from it. 